Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix a hiatal hernia on your own. I'm also going to include and share three specific hiatal hernia exercises at the end of this video, so hang tight, okay? It's estimated that 50% of people over 50 years old will be diagnosed with a hiatal hernia in their life. With 95% of those cases, 90 to 95%, being a sliding type one hiatal hernia. That percentage rises to 60% for 60 year olds. So I have some non-surgical techniques and solutions that will help you avoid surgery and medication and get the relief that you deserve. What is a hiatal hernia? A hiatal hernia is when the stomach herniates upward through the hiatus in the diaphragm, causing a second smaller stomach above the diaphragm, trapping the lower esophageal sphincter or LES. And when it traps that, it allows acid to pass upward through the esophagus. So here's some common hiatal hernia symptoms that you might find. Acid reflux or GERD leads to dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing or eating. Esophagitis, which is inflammation of the esophagus, even erosions or ulcers, and even pre-cancer Barrett's esophagus. The symptoms of hiatal hernia vary from person to person. For some, heart palpitations and chest pain can mimic a heart attack. Hiatal hernia can also cause difficulty breathing, stomach bloating, belching. Some people are more prone to hernias as well. So poor posture or scoliosis can make someone more susceptible to a hiatal hernia. Or in the case of pregnancy or a condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, where their ligaments and tendons are too loose. Other factors can increase the likelihood of developing a hiatal hernia, such as chronic constipation when you're building abdominal pressure or heavy weightlifting and not breathing properly, obesity and weak diaphragmatic muscles. Hiatal hernias can be categorized into four types. Again, 90 to 95% are sliding type one hernias. Diagnosing a small hiatal hernia of two centimeters or even three or four can be very difficult through traditional testing methods. Many small hiatal hernias are not seen well on endoscopy or barium swallow. Some additional tests are manometry, esophagram, and pH monitoring. But I have three methods to help you diagnose a hiatal hernia on your own. One. We go by symptoms. Do you have two or more of the following symptoms? If so, you most likely have a hiatal hernia. Here we go. Acid reflux, difficulty breathing, stomach pain, bloating, belching, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, and heart palpitations. Number two, Drink a glass of apple cider vinegar if your acid reflux, GERD, or heartburn gets worse within 20 to 30 minutes of drinking it, then you most likely have a hiatal hernia. And number three, the finger test can quickly help you diagnose a hiatal hernia. Place your fingers straight into your stomach just below the left side of the rib cage in the center, about one inch from the center of your ribs or xiphoid process. If at least two of these tests are positive and you have pain when you do that, you most likely have a hiatal hernia. You can then confirm a sliding type one hiatal hernia by getting an endoscopy. Unfortunately though, there are no guarantees that traditional testing an endoscopy will see and diagnose a small hiatal hernia. Anything below four centimeters is considered a small hiatal hernia. So how do we fix a hiatal hernia without surgery or medication? There are three key elements to fixing a hiatal hernia. One, posture, posture, posture. 
If you have bad posture and hunch forward, you must fix that. If you have thoracic or thoracolumbar scoliosis, you need to address that as well. Chiropractic is the most effective way to help and fix poor posture and correct scoliosis along with Schroff technique. Don't forget, the stomach is attached to the spine via the anterior longitudinal ligament, making spinal care by a chiropractor crucial for complete resolution and recovery of a hiatal hernia. Your diaphragm and your stomach also get nerve supply from the thoracic spine, specifically T6 through T9 spinal nerves. Number two, the hiatal hernia maneuver. This is an essential part of recovery because during this procedure, we are actually pulling the stomach down below the diaphragm. In chronic cases, we break up abdominal adhesions that may be present. And number three, strengthen your diaphragm muscle. With stomach breathing instead of chest breathing, you can start with the following three exercises to help you learn how to breathe properly. You can also check out a video I made with 10 of my favorite hiatal hernia exercises. Exercise number one, lumbar extension. Lie face down with your legs open at hip width apart and the top of your feet on the floor. Rest your forehead on the mat and relax your shoulders. Bend your elbows and place your forearms on the mat with your palms facing down, directly under the shoulders. Press your palms and extend your elbows, raising your chest and head off the mat. Keep contact between your forearms and the ground and your head aligned with your spine. Engage your abdominals to support your back. Hold this position for five to six seconds and do 10 repetitions, three sets. Exercise two, diaphragmatic breathing with a towel. Sit upright in a chair, place a long towel around the bottom part of your rib cage. Hold each end in both hands. Pull the towel, tightening your rib cage while breathing out. Slowly release the towel while breathing in and repeat the movement 10 to 15 times for three sets. Exercise three, diaphragmatic breathing. Lie on your back with knees bent. Place a small weight on your abdomen. Keep your neck and shoulders relaxed. Breathe in towards your abdomen. Feel how the weight rises. Feel your lower chest expanding sideways and backward. Breathe out and feel how the weight lowers. Notice a small gap between inhale and exhale. Relax into the breathing cycle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for tubing in. Don't forget to hit that like button and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.